I, we all dream of finding a hoard of gold and silver. Well, the guy behind me here found over 40 tons of it. I'm down here in Key West, Florida. Can you figure out who that is? Stay tuned, I'll show you. You might have guessed it, Mel Fisher. We're in Mel Fisher's museum right now. 40 tons of gold and silver. He's got all kinds of displays in here showing. Look at that silver bar. That is so awesome. Look at that. Look at the gold chain on the man today. All right, we're going to go through the museum here and just check out some of his uh, exciting stuff he's done. His old weight belt. This is pretty cool. All right, here we go. Mel discovered the Atosha. Here's one of the cannons off of it right here. 40 tons of gold and silver. Look at some of the artifacts. Of course, we know we find a bunch of those right there, but we don't find the gold and silver. Man, oh man, the unbelievable stuff in this museum. Some nice cannonballs. Oh my God, it's just unbelievable the stuff they got. Sounding waves. Look at this anchor. It's awesome. Let's check out the uh, iron. Here's some iron objects right here from it. From the Tosha. Look at that. He also has a conservation lab in the back. We're going to try to see if we can uh, check out here just a little bit. Just try to walk you through here and just, just give you an idea of some of the relics. Okay. Of course, they're also finding lots of um, pots and stuff. 1600s. 1600 olive jar lids. Look at this. Is that cool or what? Stuff I will I'll never find, that's for sure. Very cool stuff to I'm gonna check out some gold here in just a second. Stay tuned. How about a solid plate of gold called a salver? Footed salver. Yeah. And it was uh, the markings on the back showed it was from Spain and taxmen paid on it. Solid silver, so, solid gold right there. Solid gold. Look at that. Awesome. This is shown what the whole of the ship looked like. It had ballast stones for ballast filled with uh, silver bars and copper ingots. And when the ship broke apart, they scattered this stuff all over the ocean floor with guns and silver bars and, and stones. It's kind of just a replica of how it would have looked right here. All right, check out this intricate gold chain right here, bracelet, whatever it is. This is so cool. He's even got emeralds and rubies. Looks like sapphires embedded in it. Some very small gold pieces here. Oh my God. Look at the rings. Little bracelet tools. And this is just a thing showing you how the uh, fine work of these fragile pieces, delicate scroll work and filigree, interlocking geometric patterns. Check it out. But this is real stuff right here. Very cool. Yeah, it's real heavy. My Spain was actually taxing bullion gold at a higher rate than it was jewelry. So what they did, they actually just made jewelry out of gold and that's how they would transport the bullion. That way it's cheaper, as taxes are cheaper that way and they would just cut the chain off for the money. Look at that chain. I don't know how much that chain right there would weigh, but it would not be light because that's gold. Gold one of the heaviest metals right there. And this is a little thing that tells you in the museum here about how they were taxing the bullion at a different rate than they were the jewelry. Pretty cool. I hope you all can see that this is the back of that cross. It's got, a, it looks like Mother Mary and all kind of intricate details on the back of it right there, which is really cool. They were really, uh, did a lot of intricate, intricate work on their gold right here. All right, this cup right here, when it was found in its original condition, looked like this, completely crushed, and they completely restored it. And when they did, they found these stones in the bottom called bezoar stones. And they say that these stones are made of um, uh, hair and calcium and contain the protein that bonds with arsenic. And they were actually could, if you put liquid in it, would actually absorb the arsenic out of it and make the, whatever you're drinking safe. Pretty. It says the stones were rare and expensive items worth more than 10 times their weight in gold. So those things right there were worth more than gold by weight. 
But that bowl right there that they restored is beautiful. Talk about silver ingots. Check the size of these out. Each one weighs 70 pounds. And it actually came off that Tosha. And it says that Tosha actually carried 1,038 silver ingots right there. And this is just a couple samples of them. Look at the markings on them, tell them where they came from and identifying each single one here. That is cool right there. But let's walk around this side and check out some of the chest of silver coins. Check out the coins in here. My gosh. When you'd like to find a little pack of those right there. They carried a 100 wooden chest, each filled with about 2,000 coins. Oh my God, how many is that? Y'all figure it out. This chest weighed approximately 7,000 pounds. Oh my gosh. Here's these copper ingots that it used to carry also. 582 copper ingots weighed over 30,000 pounds were loaded aboard the Tosha when it docked in Havana. Oh, that's pretty cool too. But I like the silver. I think silver and gold is that much more. How about you? All right, silver is nice, but gold is my best. I like it better. Look at the gold. These are, and it said that the um, Patosha had, uh, let's say, um, 125 gold ingots. And these little markings on them would tell you the carat and the weight of the gold nugget or bar. So you can see the marks on them, the little X's on them and all right there. Check it out. That's a solid gold right there. That's amazing right there. That one actually has been cut, it looks like. You probably wouldn't have traded them or whatever, but I like the gold. The gold's my favorite. I don't know about y'all. I'll put this down here if y'all want to actually read that. You can actually stop the video and read it, hopefully. The museum actually shows a lot of other uh, relics that were found that weren't gold and silver. Uh, here it is, uh, some Inca plates right here, which is cool, and cups up here. All this stuff is so cool right here. I'll try to put a little picture down here of this information right here. Pretty cool. Here's a couple more relics that they found on the Tosha, and they're not exactly sure what they are. They're thinking that maybe some of the uh, people on the boat actually got these as uh, specimens for where they're at, just souvenirs to take back to where their original country was, and they probably got them from where they were traveling to and all. But uh, these, um, they may be a religious motive, suggest a religious function, but they don't even really know. You got some jade ceremonial silks there, uh, made of precious stone and worn as a ceremonial decoration. So they're pretty cool. You got a lot of other relics besides metal. All right, check this swivel gun out right here. It's one of the only ones recovered. And look at how they have preserved it so good. They actually has a preservation layer right here on site preserving the relics. So we're gonna see if we can check it out. Well, here's it. Here it is right there. Let's see if we can see through it. Yep, you can. That is awesome. It looks like it's been very well preserved since it's uh, how old it is. That's pretty cool right there. Here's some more cabinet showing some of the recovered items. In the bottom here's a gun tube. Up here we got another, looks like a gun barrel here. They've done an excellent job on the preservation of all this stuff. Check the cannonballs out. One thing interesting how we find ours are usually all sealed, but here, these are actually cannon round shots. It says lead and wrought iron. So it's covered in lead, but wrought iron in the middle. So you <laughs> see the lead lasted but the wrought iron in the middle has rusted and have, have, they have restored what they could and put it back around the lid right there. That's pretty cool. Looks like these have got uh, some markings on them, maybe identification markings. Uh, wrought iron sheathing, chain, square nails. We find them once in a while. Like a piece of ship uh, plate. Let's see what else we got here. Grinding stone, some more other stuff other than metal. Nice. That's right there, olive jar. Check that olive jar out, that's beautiful. Very cool. All right, here's a couple of fish spears that have been preserved. But I want to show you one thing right here. This one has not been preserved right here. And this is an x-ray of it showing it, what it's just like underneath this encrustation. You see these two blades come up on the left right here, and you see them right inside right there. That's pretty cool right there. Have they look at the inside before they start to preserve it and see exactly what they got to preserve. 
All right, here's a couple more Spanish gold bars and fragments from the Atosha and the Santa Margarita that Mel Fisher discovered. Um, over here we have silver plates from the Atosha, 1622. Plates made of all silver. And some gold chains, more gold chains from Santa Margarita, 1622. And the Santa Margarita and the 1715s fleet right there. Pretty cool. Silver coins. All right, check out this shot. This is called Grape Shot. It came off the Tosha, and it's kind of similar to what we see uh, back in the Civil War days where we hunt stuff and find those grape shots in there. Like the cannonball I found with 200 shots in it like that, filled with gunpowder. Very similar to that right there. All right, we got right here from the Tosha, a barb spike shot. Man, that's some spike. I hate for that to hit me. How about y'all? Oh my gosh. And Naval Toad King, wild ride, shape your side. This is how it came out with a leak of purpose and it's spinning around as it shot it off. Shrapnel from the gunner's dice. That would fling around right and just tear stuff up right there when it shot it out. Cool. All right, I definitely gotta show you this right here. Check this key in lock. It tells you locks were essential on board a ship, especially with a crew who had a reputation for stealing like pirates. Though most pirate ships impose harsh penalty for thievery, a sturdy lock could deter the temptation. That is one old <coughs> lock from the 1600s right there. This one actually came off the Atosha, 1622. This is a set of shackles recovered off the Atosha uh, by Mel Fisher. They were actually on board to restrain slaves who were in transport and to control an unruly crew. That looks like it's done an excellent job of preservation again. Unbelievable that has lasted that long. All right, here's a little thing telling you about all the silver coins in the museum. Uh, most of them were donated by Mel and Dio Fisher and also some other collectors, but it's less than 1% of the more than 400,000 coins registered aboard the Atosha in the Santa Margarita. But this is just showing a few of them right here. And it says at the top row, one real, two real. It says first row is one real. No, first row is one real, two real, three real, and four real, and eight reals at the bottom. That bottom row is all eight reals right down there. Pretty cool. Right, this little picture here shows you on a real where the mint mark, the assayer, the denomination, and the shield. And reverse down the date, quarter foil, castle, the castile, and the lions of Leon. But anyway, here's some coins right here kind of showing you from different parts from Seville, Lima, Mexico, Potsy, and just showing, I guess, they're marked. You can actually go ahead and look at them if we had time. They see how the mark uh, showed the assayer and the location where it's from and the dates were. Gold chain found by Kim Fisher in 1986. 336 inches, 28 feet long, 2.19 pounds. Oh my God. That's a lot of money right there. All right, guys, this museum is amazing. It's just all our dream, right? Gold and silver, it's in all of us. But anyway, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna head back to the boat now and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the facts of um, Mel Fisher and what he had to go through, especially a little bit of facts about uh, what he had to do to fight to get to hold all this through the, from the state of Florida. And a couple other things too, so stay tuned. All right, you know what happens when you find a treasure hoard? Everybody wants a piece of it. And Mel Fisher was no different. When he found the Atosha, after he spent his life trying to find it, the state of Florida wanted to come and take ownership of it. Well, Mel Fisher wasn't too happy about that. And he filed a suit against the state of Florida. And after, to make a long story short, a lot of things we don't want to get on this, on this video, but to make a long story short, he won, and he won ownership of the Atosha. And worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. In fact, uh, the state of Florida, in the meantime, more good details on this, but they actually had some of the treasure and had to return it back to him. So, 
Good job, Mel. I'm glad to see after somebody spends their entire life, somebody wants to jump right in and take it from you. Anyway, uh, that's going to conclude this video. Um, I'm going to put some uh, pictures of stills at the end of the video here you can check out of the museum. Really cool place. If you get down there, check it out. All right, appreciate everybody coming along on this adventure. Uh, don't forget to click like, comment below, share. Subscribe to the Gig Master. All right, thanks for coming along. Yeah.